Welcome to Excite Masterclass Car Speak. Let's talk about autonomous cars. Yes, welcome to Car Speak, a series of videos where we aim to break down the technical jargon and make you an expert on a subject in 10 minutes or less. Tesla, Toyota, Volvo, Audi, Google. What do all of these companies have in common? Autonomous vehicles. Imagine a vehicle comes to you at 70 miles per hour with no one inside. Every cell of your body will tell you to run away. But what happens if that car magically stops before flattening you on the road? That would be an autonomous vehicle. Now how do these cars see you there to brake on its own? Or better yet, how do they do that without a driver? Let's kick the story into gear by taking a look at the six levels of autonomous driving. Zero is there's almost nothing special. Zilch. It's still called a level, but let's get to level one. That's called driver assistance. The vehicle is controlled by the driver, but some driver assist features can be added through the vehicle's brain. These can be minor steering, acceleration or braking tasks performed by the vehicle. The second level is partial automation. The driver is still in control and the vehicle can respond to certain safety situations and pull off jobs like adaptive cruise control and automated lane changing. For level 3 we have conditional automation. Here the driver is still a necessity but is not required to monitor the whole driving environment. Because the vehicle carries out safety critical functions under various roadway and traffic conditions, even if the driver isn't aware of any danger. The high automation of level 4 finally leaves the driver to relax and stare at the fancy Ferrari passing by. In this level, the vehicle performs all the driving functions in certain conditions, but with the option to take control over the car by the driver. So think about circumstances like snow or foul weather that requires driver input if you want to make it home in one piece. The next step is final and overall perfection of automotive tech. Full automation, where the vehicle can operate without any human input. Now, Tesla's autopilot is a good example for level 2 autonomy. Now, none of what I said explained how this self-driving sorcery sees its way around the roads. It's not sorcery, but it is a few things. You have LiDAR, you have radar, and you have cameras. These are the best tools that can be used to mimic a human's ability to see. Let's start with radar. Radar can see hundreds of yards ahead and pick out speeds of all the objects it can find. Demonstrations show that even when the onboard cameras are blinded, a self-driving vehicle can navigate with the help of radar. This is necessary if the cameras are misled by foul weather. Now, it can't predict if you're a human or a rock, but it can detect if you're moving or not, along with speed and direction of movement. This is enough for the onboard computer to prevent the car from hugging a rock or flattening a pedestrian. If you look closely at autonomous vehicles, you might find cameras on the roof, or even maybe along the bumpers. Cameras are the one thing that helps the vehicle see lane signs and road signs. The one and only Elon Musk states that a self-driving vehicle can enable a full robot takeover just by using its cameras and the sea of pixels that it feeds into the vehicle's brain. However, in bad weather, of course, it may depend on those other systems, like radar, to see the final destination. The final and most important tool that almost everyone uses is LiDAR. Its job is to track objects around the car using laser pings. It then builds a map of the environment around the vehicle, and it can work in every lighting condition because it uses lasers rather than reflections. Now, let's get into the exciting part. Automobiles companies are increasingly spending money and time on delivering autonomous vehicles. Ford's CEO has stated that they plan to deliver a level 4 autonomous vehicle by 2021. He said, no gas pedal, no steering wheel. The next-gen XC90 SUV is also a self-driving vehicle that's planning to hit the roads in 2021. It's from Volvo and, according to them, Volvo drivers deserve to eat, sleep, work and watch a movie, relax, do whatever. Well, I don't know about motion sickness then. 
Anyhow, they claim it would be a level 4 autonomous SUV and it will be using laser sensors to navigate. Audi has already introduced the A8, which claims to be the first production level 3 autonomous vehicle. That was back in 2017. It can perform acceleration, braking, steering and starting from a dead stop, all without the driver paying attention. This has it all, LiDAR, cameras and radar. In 2020, Waymo showed us a level 4 autonomous vehicle. Now, Waymo is a company under Alphabet, the parent company of Google. They began road testing their technology on modified Jaguars, Chryslers, Lexuses, and even Prii before launching the egg-shaped Waymo that can, well, it can only fit two passengers, but hey, it's a start, right? There's an abundance of automakers that build self-driving cars. However, out of all of this lot, only Elon Musk has said that they would provide level five autonomy with Teslas by the end of this year. So far, they've delivered the Tesla Model S, the Model 3, the Model X, the Model Y, all of which feature radar, cameras, and sonar. But surprisingly, not LiDAR, because according to Elon Musk, that tech is stupid, expensive, and unnecessary. But what remains to be seen is how exactly all this tech is gonna fit into the context of a country like Sri Lanka. In fact, many developing nations face similar challenges. How do we tackle the unpredictable nature of our roads? The fewer formal rules in place, the more the ability to predict intent matters. Around wild humans, cars can't rely on shared guidelines to dictate behavior. Basic driver assists that keep cars inside painted lanes, for example, are only useful if everyone else on the road respects these lane markings. Otherwise, they're useless or even dangerous. The problem is that in a country like Sri Lanka, driving according to the letter of the law could be more dangerous than conforming to law-breaking human drivers. And to be honest, there's very little research on how such tech will be adapted to nations where drivers don't respect road rules. For autonomous cars to work here, either engineers are gonna have to come up with a new solution or our rule makers will have to get a little bit more creative with the short-term implementations of those lane laws. What do you think about the future of self-driving cars? Would you ever feel comfortable handing over complete control to an autonomous vehicle? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching Car Speak. We'll catch you again on the next Excite Masterclass.